Adventures in Sound with Max Axiom, Super Scientist. Written by Emily Song. Illustrated by Cynthia Martin and Anne Timmons. Copyright 2007 by Capstone Press. Recording by Red Brick Learning. Section 1. What's that sound? Super scientist Max Axiom's peaceful slumber is about to end as his journey into the science of sound begins. What's all that noise? Hello? Max, are you up? It's your neighbor, Al. Do you hear all that drilling and pounding? Can you believe? How did my life become so full of noise? And in other news... You know, I think it's time to find out. Loud noises can give you a headache for sure. But sound can be pretty incredible when you get to know it. Come on, let's go on a journey into the amazing world of sound. You're disturbing the peace! Can you hear me? You're disturbing the peace! Uh, Al, I don't think he can hear you. Disturbing the peace, I say. Clearly, this racket is driving Al crazy. Let's take a look at how sound gets its power. Do you see that? Vibrations cause invisible waves in the air. Sort of like throwing a pebble causes ripples in a pond. These waves make up what we call sound. When an object vibrates, it actually causes nearby air molecules to bounce against each other. Their motion causes other molecules to bounce too. This transfer of energy moves outward from the source of the sound, creating sound waves. Of course, some sounds are louder than others. The difference is called intensity. Stronger vibrations are more intense. They cause louder sounds. Loudness is also called volume. The higher the volume, the louder the sound. I have a job to do. Please leave me alone. The human larynx. Inside your throat, your larynx allows you to talk, sing, and make other noises. Inside the larynx, two muscles called vocal cords squeeze together and vibrate as air passes by them. The faster they vibrate, the higher your voice sounds. Your tongue and lips shape the sounds you make. Distance affects volume too. Sound waves lose energy as they travel. So the farther away I get, the quieter the jackhammer sounds to me. Ah, much better. Sound involves more than just volume. This bird's song gets louder and softer, but it is also full of notes, some higher than others. The bird may not know it, but the secrets behind its lovely melody are called frequency and pitch. Frequency equals the number of sound waves that pass a point during a certain amount of time. For instance, right now only one sound wave passes by me each second. Therefore, the sound has a frequency of 1 hertz. But if 50 waves pass by me in one second, the sound has 50 hertz. Faster vibrations create sounds with higher frequencies. The frequency of a sound determines its pitch. Something with lots of hertz sounds higher than something with fewer hertz. But people can't hear everything. In fact, we can only hear frequencies between 20 and 20,000 hertz. Sounds below 20 hertz are called infrasound. Sounds above 20,000 hertz are called ultrasound. 
Check this out. Dogs hear some sounds with frequencies up to 40,000 hertz. That explains why your dog might howl for no apparent reason. Dogs hear things we don't even know are there. Section 2. Making Sense of the Waves We've gone to the source of sound waves. Now, let's take a look at how these invisible waves turn into the sounds we hear. Noise! Noise! Who do these people think they are? We hear through our ears. So let's take a look inside Owl's ear. Believe it or not, the folds and curves of the outer ear serve a purpose. They collect sounds and funnel them into the ear. The ear canal is also part of the outer ear. It carries sounds to the middle ear just ahead. In the middle ear, sounds vibrate the eardrum and three tiny bones called the hammer, anvil, and stirrup. Together, these parts make sounds louder before they are sent into the inner ear. Vibrations from the stirrup travel to the snail-shaped cochlea in the inner ear. Liquid in the cochlea gets wavy when vibrations arrive. These are hair cells inside the cochlea. They send electrical signals to the brain. The signals serve as messages that sound has arrived. Sound moves pretty fast, but how fast is it? The speed of sound depends on what sound travels through. Sound traveling through air at sea level and room temperature moves at 770 miles per hour. Sound versus light. In a race, light would leave sound in the dust. Nothing moves faster than light, which zings along at about 670 million miles per hour. Phew! <laughs> We can't travel faster than light, but we can move faster than the speed of sound. That supersonic jet just broke the sound barrier. When it did, it left a whole bunch of sound waves in its wake. The sound waves piled up and produced a sonic boom. That boom was loud, but it was different from the sharp, jarring noise of the jackhammer. Every sound is different, and lots of factors affect whether something sounds quiet or muffled, loud or shrill. Let's find out why. The material sound travels through affects how you hear it. If you've ever listened to sounds underwater, you may know what I mean. Yikes! Hi, Max. Did you know that sound waves travel five times faster through water than through air? Oh yeah. It's also hard to tell which direction sounds are coming from underwater. That well really took me by surprise. It was probably talking to other whales. Many creatures use sound to communicate underwater. That's cool, but I think I'll try to find some place quieter. I want it quiet. But this is ridiculous. It's so quiet in space, I can't even hear you pounding on the space station. That's because space is a vacuum. There's no air. Sound needs some type of material to travel through. So if our radios quit working, we'd have no way to talk to each other? Not unless we pressed our helmets together and let the sound of our voices pass between the plastic visors. Wow. I think I'll head back to Earth where I can talk as much as I want. <laughs> Besides air and water, sound can travel through solids, too. These kids can hear each other talk into the cups because the string vibrates and carries sound waves between them. Section 3. What Sound Can Do 
Now we know where sounds come from and how we hear them. Let's check out what sound can do and what we can do with sound. Uh-oh, there's a storm coming. Time to head indoors. I'll just hop on this sound wave and take it for a ride. One of the great things about sound is how it behaves around other objects. Watch this. Sounds that hit soft surfaces, like this tapestry, are absorbed. Whee! -hee -hee! Sound that bounces or reflects off hard surfaces and back to your ears creates an echo. echo. Sound waves don't always travel in a straight line. Water can bend or refract a sound wave. That's because sound changes direction when it goes from air to water. I know an oceanographer who uses sound to study the ocean floor. Let's see what he's up to today. Hi, Zach. You picked a great time to drop in, Max. We're sending out pulses of sonar. Each ping is a sound wave. Because we know how fast sound moves, we can figure out how far away objects are. We just measure how long it takes the sound to reflect back to us. Quick fact. The word sonar stands for sound, navigation, and ranging. What are you looking for today, Zach? We've never explored this part of the ocean before. We're using sonar to make a map of the area. Sonar is a great tool. Whoever came up with the idea must have been pretty smart. That's true, but animals figured it out first. Many animals use sonar to find prey and avoid predators. When bats do it, it's called echolocation. Rats, whales, and dolphins also get information from bouncing sound waves. Speaking of dolphins, I think I'll go out there to listen to them talk. Thanks for showing me around, Zach. No problem. Have a good swim, Max. Ow! Oh, that screech hurt my ears. I'm okay, but noises can be harmful sometimes. I'll show you how. Section 4. Listen safely. Audiologists are ear specialists. They test people for hearing problems. Oh, hello, Max. Oops, I'm sorry, Dr. Early. I didn't realize you were with a patient. It's okay, Max. You can stay. Al, what are you doing here? All that drilling bothered me this morning. I'm having trouble hearing people when they speak. What do you think is the problem, Dr. Early? Many people lose their hearing as they get older. But I think Al has been exposed to loud noises too often. Take a look at these pictures of healthy and damaged hair cells. The damaged hair cells look a bit wilted. That's right. Loud noises kill hair cells. Once hair cells die, they never grow back. Stupid construction noise. Weren't you a drummer in a rock band for 10 years? Well, yes. Your repeated exposure to loud music might explain your hearing loss, Al. This hearing aid will help. It will make sound seem louder by giving a boost to your hair cells. Is hearing loss in everyone's future? Not necessarily. People can protect their hearing by wearing earplugs or avoiding extra loud noises. And Al, yelling at construction workers might not be doing you any favors. What a day! Exploring sound can wear a person out. But now I respect my ears more than ever. And these adventures in sound have really helped me appreciate the pleasant sounds that surround me every day. With all we've heard and done today, I'm ready to sleep well tonight. 
And with all you've learned, you should too. <laughs>